Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to really show you uh, why you should apply fundamental analysis to your technical zones. And I always say to traders that there's no technical level that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis and, um, you know, fundamental analysis and resentment analysis is really where you should uh, try to take your bias from and determine your bias from not necessarily fundamentals and so uh, there was a demand zone here that many traders would have taken for various reasons um, and it didn't work and I'm going to tell you the fundamental reason why this was unlikely to work and one of the other reasons why you should kind of apply fundamental analysis to your trading is because then you can not only pick the you know the best zones but also pick the best pairs right the pairs that are likely to trend and the pairs that are likely uh, to to not trend right if you're employing uh, trend and i guess range based uh, strategies and so why would traders have taken this uh, demand zone in the first place right because at the time if you go back use the um, the replay tool right traders would have been looking at this area here at least um, as a zone to get involved in based off of the recent trend right so we've got uh, you know prices making higher highs and higher lows right here dominant trend yeah even if you zoom out a little bit it even breaks past you know previous previous uh, high yeah and so everybody is taught online that that is the continuation of a strong trend right nice bearish i'm sorry bullish move to the upside support becomes resistance uh, resistance becomes support so the trend should want to continue it looked like it was uh, continuing around here as well and um but something obviously changed right something changed now Fundamentally, let's start off with the dollar and why really uh, you should probably be looking and this is not financial advice, of course, but why I um, am a got a short bias on the dollar um, and for um, several reasons, one being um, the recent news that came out on Friday that the federal uh, favored inflation gauge rises by less than forecast. Right. So the core PCE index climbed. 0.3% last month, January, uh, January revised down, right? And so a key gauge of US inflation rose last month by less than expected and consumer spending stabilized, suggesting the Federal Reserve may be close to the end of its most aggressive uh, cycle of interest rate hikes in decades. And so if you're not too sure what that means, ultimately interest rates um, are hiked um, and that tends to typically appreciate a currency and central banks tend to hike rates in the face of rising inflation because inflation actually is the devaluation of a currency. So to counter devaluation, the currency devaluation, central banks will hike rates, right? And so the end of their hiking cycle is coming to a potential end uh, sooner as inflation starts to actually come back down to their 2% inflation target, right? And so the end of um, rate hikes, which again, typically and usually, not all the time, um, but it has the effect of uh, appreciating the currency, you know, that um, monetary policy is coming to an end. And in fact, Citibank, um, their Citibank analysis, um, 27th of March, I'm recording this on the 3rd of April, um, their long-term forecasts actually forecast, if we look at the dollar around here, forecast the dollar to actually go, dollar index to go lower, right, over the next one to three, uh, zero to three months, um, one, 101.53, um, and then six to 12 months looking at uh, 96.8. And another reason is that we find that city analysts are still forecasting a US recession in the second half of 2023. And so with a recession uh, potentially on the cards um, later this year, um, central banks are not really going to want to hike into a recession because it basically will cause the economy to contract even more because you're hiking borrowing and lending costs in a an economic environment where um business isn't doing too well right in the recession so uh, they tend not to want to hike or in fact it's um 
hike in that cycle. In fact, it will be the cutting of the cycle. Now, again, this isn't set in stone. This isn't a prediction in terms of, you know, it's going to happen. Um, this is just a forecast about what is known currently uh, about the state of the US, um, the US economy. Yeah. And so with all that taking shape, we have on the, um, you know, on this area here, um, you know, why would you want to buy the US dollar is the question, right? Potentially, uh, you wouldn't, right? Or I wouldn't personally, they're, they're better, you know, pairs and, and uh, currencies to buy, right? Against maybe the dollar. But we go from the dollar to the Canadian dollar now, right? So we don't really want to buy the US dollar here, right? Um, or buy the US dollar at all. And now we look at the Canadian dollar, right? What would make the Canadian dollar strengthen um, potentially against the US dollar. And what happened on Friday was that the uh, Canada's economy showed a surprising or showed surprising strength uh, despite its rate cuts. The GDP was on track for a 2.8% uh, annualized growth in the first quarter and Canada's economy kept growing at the start of the year, defying expectations of a stall and eventual technical recession in the face of the highest interest rate in a year in 15 years, right? And so again, um it talks about the highest interest rates in 15 years because interest rates are supposed to actually contract the economy, um, are designed to contract the economy, and in fact, um, get this beyond the scope of this video but central banks do want that um the the um, economy to contract and employment to rise to get inflation down but again that's um something uh, that's something else but the point is is that there was some decent news out of uh, canada um and they may you know at least stall their uh, uh, uh recession uh later this year also as well um, what came out today was that um, OPEC ended up cutting supply um, and by doing that, uh, cutting supply in a surprise uh, shock cut, uh, the market is now pricing in potentially uh, some markets, um, banks are pricing in $100 oil, right, to tighten markets. And so um, Goldman Sachs is pricing it by higher by five dollars to ninety five dollars a barrel, and there are several other uh, banks, you know, to Goldman Sachs, to Bank of America, to Citigroup, RBC, etc., all talking about you know what the effect of the uh, shock cut uh, that OPEC um, done over the weekend, and um, why is that relevant? Because to the Canadian dollar, because the Canadian dollar and oil uh, are correlated. Let's say the exchange rate between Canada and the US is often strongly correlated to the price of oil over the long run, yeah, because it's not 100% correlated just because oil goes up today doesn't mean that the Canadian dollar will go up today. So, um, you know, but over the long run, right, when the price of oil rises, the value of the Canadian dollar also called the loony also usually rises, right? Usually is the key word. Um, it's not all the time, right? Um, so uh, relative to that of the US dollar, the correlation can be directly attributed to the way Canada earns most of its US dollars from the sale of crude oil and the percentage of Canada's revenue that is that this constitutes. And so this goes into a bit more uh, in depth. But point being is that if oil um, is correlated to, and usually correlated to, um, you know, oil, and we see oil looking to uh, go to um, $100 or go a lot higher than it is right now, which is currently maybe around about $85 a barrel, something like that. Then the combination of a stronger, potentially stronger Canadian dollar, yeah, in this area, and a weaker dollar, right, fundamentally, the technical analysis level was unlikely to hold now again we deal with probabilities in trading it wasn't 100 percent you know going to you know hold or not hold but the likelihood of that holding was very very low at that point in time so if you were looking for just a pullback right into you know maybe some sort of 50 percent level as the trend you know was uh from this low for example to this high and then you're looking at the you know 50 percent pullback or even if you're looking at some sort of uh fibonacci pullback right so let's change that to uh fib 
retracement, you know, 61.8%, you know, fib, right, which would have been somewhere around here. Yep. Yeah. Right. And that would have aligned with, again, some sort of resistance in and around that zone, which traders probably looked like they were, it was bouncing off of. If you go down to the lower time frame, traders probably would have been looking at, yeah, that area there as a level of support and resistance. Yeah, it starts to bounce off there, but then it falls even further. Again, there's no technical analysis level that's going to stand in the way of strong fundamentals. So you might as well have the fundamentals on your side first before looking at the technicals, right? It makes sense. And so, um, you know, price action wasn't predicting that oil, uh, you know, OPEC were going to cut rates. It's impossible to determine that from looking at a price chart. It's impossible. So, um, you know, it was basically just a pullback from a level, you know, from a low to a new high. Traders would have been looking at, you know, potential 38.2 pullbacks, 50% um, pullbacks, 61.8% pullbacks. And then obviously prices have just cut through those levels because, you know, the dollar at the moment um, has a, you know, I guess a sell bias uh, from a lot of banks. And uh, the Canadian dollar actually has a bit of a reverse of the fortunes. And so the market is revaluing the exchange rate of the dollar CAD uh, lower for now. So with that being said, um, if you do want to, um, Fly fundamental analysis to your trading head over to trading180.com currently um, the mentoring group is open it won't be open for long so um, head over to trading180.com if you want to learn how to apply fundamental analysis to your trading and avoid um, you know taking trades like this more often than not and also as well uh, learning how to choose the best pairs um, you know, in, in Forex. And so you can, uh, you know, change your, uh, your trading uh, fortunes. Anyways, guys, take care. Until the next video.